you think about the the blackwood with the uh, the clock in it? Uh, I'd like to have that. Or the there, gator, navigator. Yeah. I said, because the main thing is, I'd like to throw as many OEM options on this thing as possible. The yeah. big goal I'd like to have is the heated cool seats options. That to me would be really cool, but there's two problems with it. Um, first off, I'd have to get the seats custom made because I want it to match this. Right. And these obviously are not perforated. Um, so, I don't know how I don't know how cool they are. Um, I don't know how that how that function works on that. But. Actually, it's just a fan. Okay. It's just literally a fan that has a filter on the bottom of it, and right. I think on the back of it. So it does ventilate from both, but it's no real actually AC. It's more of fan seats. Um, but the harness on that thing, that harness is probably about 20 to 30 wires just for one seat. Well, from what I've seen on like the regular power seats, it's two wires to the seat. Yeah. And Powers that, and ground and that's it, to the seat. That's right. That and then it. the rest of it is all self-contained in the seat and then goes to the switch pack and goes to the motors and all that. But like actually coming from the body side, again, self-contained. Now, I don't know about the heating cool. I haven't really looked into no, that side of it. But I remember whenever, because I found one of these things, because uh, Kyle, um, Mickey, he had the um, lifted one. I think he's got like a supercharged one now. But um, Kyle alone, he... Um, he had we he came down there um, and looked at one, and we were pulling the harness on this thing. I looked at the giant connector for this thing, and I said that thing was thirty watt. And I said it was about 20, 30 wires on this thing, and I was like, Jesus Christ, that thing is massive. But um, yeah, that's that, that's an eventuality. But the main thing is, when, if and ever when I do that, I'm gonna have to get custom seat covers made for it because I want to keep this scheme because it's one of the most eye-catching things about the truck in general. Well, the other nice thing is because this is a 10th gen, you have the, the lockout for the airbags. So you don't have to worry about having the scale on the seat like all the new trucks have. Right. Where you have the passenger seat deactivation. The one interesting thing also is, um, and I don't, I, I wouldn't even want to mess with that in general because I don't even know what kind of hair, what kind of trouble do you be getting with that. But I, I think I've even told you or shown it, but there were a, a few cases that I've seen in expeditions of these things having side airbags you could legitimately get side airbags in a first gen expedition okay i had i've never seen it but it wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if ford had some really rare rare options i mean even a couple years ago like the uh explorers had optional inflating second row seat belts the what inflating seat belts yeah you never seen those i've heard of them but that was something i thought that was more modern it, no yeah yeah yeah, the, like a 2017 Explorer or something like that. It was an option. So okay. it's like in 10 years from now, people are going to look at that and be like, what? I didn't know this existed. This was an option. Like either because all the cars are going to have it or because nobody has it anymore. But but yeah, I wonder if I, huh. so I can find it. But I think I, I know I had a picture of it. But um, I don't remember ever talking about that, but I believe but no. you. If yeah, you it tell was, me you did. <laughs> it was so weird because I saw like, this thing's got side airbags of all things. Right. Because, I mean, you didn't even think that was even a thing at that point. Right. But that was, I remember seeing that at, at a junkyard before. I bet I can actually find that dang that thing. Um, but, yeah, that was, the OEM, that was the OEM connector on this thing, but it's more of that type of connector on this thing okay. as it is. Yeah. But um, the whole mess on this thing, because that console, actually right now, Probably weighs a good 50 pounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the consoles are heavy by themselves, much less fully trimmed out. Oh, yeah. And there was also the one thing. And as I once again, I can thank you again for that. Ah, the rear controls. Yeah. Because um, how it was all integrated into that. Yeah. As soon as I hooked up the 6 CD changer, actually, it all fell into place. Nice. And that was kind of a nice thing where... Um, I said that's what what I like so much about these things and what I've learned about it in general it seems like Ford had just said let's build this stuff and even if they don't use it it's going to be there right the 6 CD changer this truck was never going to have it right. but even on the last radio it was our plug right. it in hey I see it yeah, as long as you didn't get like a super stripped out XL you pretty much came pre-wired for almost everything I think I know not always but in most cases you, you came pre-wired for stuff like power pedals and um, the power rear slider. Power seats. Uh, well, power seats were hit or miss, but yeah, you know, it's just it's options like that that are just. Uh, and the other thing you could do too, and I could probably walk you through 
doing that at the same time you're doing your delay or your uh, repin repinning on that is add the uh, add a delay wire to the radio like a lot of modern cars when you take the key out yeah it'll stay powered on until you open the doors yeah it's just kind of a, a nice thing where you're you can right, you can right. you can shut the truck off and kind of you know be gathering your phone and your your keys and your wallet and maybe a cup of water or whatever you just grab your stuff and the music's still on before you get out <laughs> it almost seems like they'd be tied into the actual just uh accessory delay relay wouldn't it yeah essentially because so actually one thing i've actually considered is um one guy i don't know if you've seen him much but his name is uh, tyler jennings he's got he um he's done a, a number of things but one thing he did i thought was actually pretty cool is the external signal mirrors like this he actually ran them where it was a dual beam one where it had the both running light function and the high beam function interesting so it actually turned out pretty cool, but that was back when he was on the forums. On the, did he have the, on the glass or did he have the ones that were on the sides? On the sides. Okay. He had like an 01 or 02 Super Group. Yeah, okay. Um, but I remember him doing that and making a walkthrough of it where it's like he ran it, to, he ran an extra power source to it and just to put an inline resistor to it so it had the lower level on it. Right. And it worked pretty well. Um, another guy. Those are probably, I imagine it's probably an incandescent bulb. Yeah, it uses a nine. Standard one is a nine twenty one. Yeah. Uh, the I have one ninety four LEDs in there right now. I'm not. The, the LEDs may, may not like low, the low input voltage if you try to do that. Yeah, because I mean they already some even have. I think some even have like the canvas ones. Well, I have extra components on them, but well, we don't. Yeah, they'll have the. But basically, the canvas ones have the correct resistor reading as if it was an incandescent bulb. Is essentially what it is, and not yeah. just a resistor, but the correct resistor and it mimics the bulb so then you don't have weird like power crying. fluctuations or bulb outage warnings or anything like that you basically don't have the car getting really pissed off at you right yeah crisis are crisis are really 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 bad for that especially like whenever they do the um aftermarket lighting for those things mm -hmm. i know like trs has these special modules specifically for the mopar ones because they are picky with their lighting very very picky i've heard people like jerry mc uh, jerry mc jeremy mcphail on um Headlight junkies. He's done so many of those ram lights, and it's just they're, they're picky. But um, well, I, I built my own harness for mine, and everyone's like, everyone's always looking for. It always cracks me up on headlight junkies how people are looking for like Y adapters in this bracket. And I'm like, make it's your just own. wires. You can make your own for about four dollars. And that's pretty <laughs> much what, that's pretty much what I had to do. I just I mean, made a relay block, and then I cut apart a factory halogen bulb, mm -hmm. and made that my own pigtail. So I, where the, the metal comes through it into the bulb, I broke the glass off of it and then wired onto that. Yeah, actually. So then I can, I have, my harness is a plug and play harness. That was actually. And I could literally pull them out, plug them back in onto the, on the factory headlights. If you ever need to sell them. <laughs> if that. I needed to. That was actually kind of one thing I did also. Actually, I'll turn the lights back on, but yeah, oil pressure gauge. <laughs> that one. Um, that one I've actually got set up where if I ever wanted to return it to stock I could because what I did is um, they rely on using a different oil pressure sender with it in, in, in general but what I did is I took an oil because of work here I just bought one with my discount for like two bucks right. cut the connector off of it soldered on hard using one of the uh, trigger wires for the starter solenoid um, I would snap that onto the end of the new sensor and just plug into the existing har the harness then just deep in the original harness and plug it into the back so if I ever want to return to the stock, which I probably never will, it's simply... So, so the Navigator cluster uses a different oil pressure sensor is what you're telling me? No, the um, I'm because with this one, um, because if you actually rip it, you'll actually see the gauge itself move up and down. It's a live feed gauge now. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. There's a guy named... I can't remember well, his name. Yeah, because it, it was... The factory one would show if you were low but if you were climbing past normal then it wouldn't it wouldn't move at all like it would just show it as um like yeah. if, if you yeah it would like if you i because always remember like when i did oil change like i'd sit there and watch the gauge and wait till it climbs up you know you start the truck and it half a second and the gauge climbs up but yeah, that but yeah one. It, it's not a true live reading not like the uh 
I like the Chevrolets always had the light readings. Yeah, the dummy light. And they say it's a dummy light one, but a guy named Mark over at AccuTac made a created a module for these things specifically. Interesting. That allows you to use it. And the biggest thing is, it, all of it can be returned to stock because you just grind away a bit on the PCB right. and you put the terminals away. So you put on his ones and he tells you how to lay it out. I just pinned it as it was and it still does actually work with the OEM oil, low oil pressure gauge okay. light. Okay. So I didn't, yeah, yeah I was not on the same page when you started that train of thought yeah i got you but no that's that's, a, cool. that's another aftermarket thing but it still has the oem look and one reason i actually love the um harley gauge cluster for this one is because it's a zero to 100 psi gauge and each one of those lines actually counts as 10 psi okay so it even works out better so yeah um, that, that gauge I, I was thinking that was when i saw when i saw the gauge lit up but backlit but not not seeing it like this. I was thinking it was a navigator. Because yeah. they're pretty similar. They are similar. They actually, just don't have the silver faces on them. And the thing is, with the white needles, it looks that way. Yeah. But the red needles, the one that I think I actually didn't like was, they were actually kind of dim. Yeah. Um, and I think, because this was actually a pretty old gauge cluster in this thing, it was actually had about 250,000 miles on it. So some of the clear plastic has some heat damage on it. Yeah. But, um, and you can see a little bit on it as far as they're not as clean as it used to be. But, um, no, the Navigator cluster was the first one I had for a while, and I mean, whenever I posted that up, that actually took off pretty well, because they... I've got one in my garage and no one wants to buy it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm they... like, someone please buy it, it's so nice. I have, a, I have a Gator steering wheel and a Navigator cluster and a Navigator clock spring, and I'm trying to sell all of it. And, and I, I mean, pulled out of a junkyard, they were super clean, and... And that, that's kind of one thing where I was like, I'd like to have the string of controls on this thing, and, right. put, and eventually I do want to throw EATC in this thing. I know that's going to be a, mm, mm, a fun, fun day. But, um, yep. The only other thing is I, I'd like to find, but I'm never going to find. <laughs> I'm never going to find it. The cabin air filter kits for these things. Mm. I, I, I got desperate. I got so desperate one day. I looked up the original part sheet for this thing and checked every part number. I looked online. I, I was like, okay. But you y'all sell the filters. Y'all just don't sell I'm yeah. sure it's a generic filter, but yeah. But the main thing is actually, if you go to the net, the parks here, you can buy the Motocraft filter. Yeah, I've got the Motocraft one in here, and they actually legitimately do fit better. They they seal better, and as far as I already cut the hole in there, and it fits as well as it's going to fit for. You know, not having the proper kit with it. Right. And there was actually apparently one guy had come in here, and he actually had one of the original kits still in his truck. Oh. And it kind of stunk because if I was there, I would say, what do you want for it? Right. I don't care what you want. <laughs> as long as you're not ridiculous, right. I will buy it from you. Yeah. But it's just, you just can't find them. You yeah. just can't and find That's not something thing. I would ever think to look for in the junkyard either. Like, besides the fact that they're exceedingly rare, it's not something I would, you know, I, and I don't go to the junkyard all that often, but... It's one of those things that I, I wouldn't, it would not cross my mind to look for that. But. I check out a branch every time because I mean, I'm actively looking for it because well, I wouldn't I, act. I can probably find you a bubble, a, a, gator, a gator bubble, it'll be tan or gray, you'll have to paint it. But Yeah, that's, that's kind of one thing. I'd love to find a blackwood one, but I know that's going to be almost near impossible. Yeah. And that's just finding these Unless black... you find someone with a blackwood that's parting one out, but. Yeah. I know, I said as far as this one, these are, uh, it was, I was really nice to get this black console trim from you because. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the actually biggest issues I had with this thing, I had painted the other one black, but it always rubbed right there and you'd see that tan paint right below it, yep. so. Um, and the other thing, um, you don't have, um, the factory seatbelts mm -hmm. with the consoles in them had a square of, uh, what Velcro. I would call female Velcro. And so the, the soft side of, of Velcro, mm -hmm. it was just a, like a one inch by one inch square stuck on the back of the seatbelt. And that kept it, if, if you saw on the console sides, how they had that like scratching arc in there, that's from, th that console was put in a truck that didn't have the protective uh, yeah. Velcro backing on the back of the seatbelt. And I'm also a little surprised at that because you think they would even, even put that on the ones that were, had the standard bucket seat like this. Because this one did actually have the standard, the regular console on this thing, which is actually a little bit higher. So it would have rubbed against that. But those, the console bodies are shaped differently. They're a little, no, little more right. tucked in. You're right. That makes sense. And w the issue where you run into is when you're buckled and you're moving around and the buckles is doing this, 
while you're sitting in it, that's how you get that arcing motion. It's not because you're moving the seat in and out a bunch. It's because your your body is naturally moving that seatbelt just a little bit back and forth. And it's just something out of habit you don't even realize, and that's just subconscious almost. Well, in your case, I mean, the console was already scratched out. So. Uh, well, but hey, <laughs> it's a true black console. That's it all is. I care about. It is. Actually, that was actually one thing I was curious about. This small little hole right there, what was there? I don't know. It was there when I got it. <laughs> I assume they had some uh, some sort of pass through, maybe a, a base knob or something was stuck there. Would be my guess. I was wondering if you had some sort of magical little I, switch there. I like... didn't. Um, something I I did on my 2014 F-150 I had. I I put a uh, in which it wouldn't make as much of a difference in yours, but I put a a little micro switch like right in here or mm -hmm. maybe it was up here. I don't remember. And then had a a bot. I had a Mercedes puddle lamp LED which is just a little board LED and I stuck it up onto the bottom lip of the console so when you lifted the console the light came on I might and then to... now they added that on the 13th or the 12th gens no 13th gen whenever the my 18 had that from the factory and I'm like huh they copied me <laughs> just a, another thing that I was innovative on and Ford decided to copy me on I might have to do something like that either that but, or I mean in your case you got don't have a whole lot of space in here but. no I don't and that was kind of I was like what well, I could fit some things in there what can you fit not much but i could fit what i need yeah. but no it's i i did it because when i when i put much because i put a i've put so much money into the damn console it, it, it's beyond ridiculous <laughs> i if i start going through my mind the money i've put into this console right. i'd cry and and you and i are probably the only two people on the face of the planet that would appreciate everything and it, it just, <laughs> like i nerd out on on 10th gen stuff it's so i mean to, to me i think because yeah. i i see this and i'm like i think this is cool because yes it's useless yes it doesn't have half the roads on this dagnap thing and it talks right it talks but it, it's one of those most things where it's it's a talking piece right it's it's, it's cool but and it, uh, kind of the funny thing is actually, and I even found it hilarious because I because one time I used this thing to go see Chris, this thing was raining out in structures quicker than this thing. Really? Yes. Hmm. So it was it was a really good system side for by it, side <laughs> for its time, <laughs> for its time. But well, that time was many many years ago. Yes. Many many years ago. Yep. But no. It, yeah, it, I'd be really curious if you could find. I'm sure you probably wouldn't want to risk it, but find a newer version of the same system, maybe not necessarily a Ford system, but this same system and get a, a little bit newer DVDs for it. The interesting thing is I know where to start because the thing is when I had the maps updated on this thing, it says your Dayton system will now get updated. There are actually, and if you look up a Dayton navigation system, it actually looks really similar to that. I right. don't think you really find them, and I would be able to get newer maps, but it'd be repinning the whole thing and so on and so forth and oh, I would, configuring I would think, it. I would think, since it's on the disc, I would think if you had, I mean, I, I wouldn't expect you could put like a 2018 disc in it or something like that, or I mean, I'm sure probably 2012 or something was the last time they had discs. But. Well, I mean, as far as the newest, those discs right there, that is the most modern version of these discs, 2002. Right, but that's what I'm saying is those are the mo most modern ones through Ford. Right. But that system wasn't dev developed by Ford. It's whatever. By Dayton. Right. Dayton so and then I imagine there's probably some other manufacturers that use that same type of hardware. It's very well could get a, a well. Nissan or a Land Rover or something like that disc and... The only concern I have, and I heard this from maybe a person or two, is I don't know if there'd be any sort of unique um, manufacturer coding in it right. that under normal circumstances it would work, but due to this one line of code in there oh, it's, that it's it searches possible. for. And, yeah, and I would I would be afraid that whatever gamble <laughs> that you would have could brick something and, and make it completely dead, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, worst case scenario, even if I have to replace a disc reader itself, I can actually still find these things. Yeah. Um, they're not too bad. Actually, this was a, a remanufactured one they had rebuilt and everything, so I can still even buy these things. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't be horribly worried about it. I've actually got... The thing is, I've actually got another one. Yeah. I've got a whole another whole navigation set. system in this thing, plus that one actually has the car phone wiring built into it. <laughs> Okay. This one I had to add in, and all I have is just run off the main um, ignition, just with the ignition wire on it. But I've got the extra parts which I can fiddle around with, because, well, I have a problem. 
<laughs> I have a problem. But um, no, I mean something like this. It's just it, it, it's just one of these things where some of the stuff I tell people that say, you know, Joey, why did you even bother doing this? There's no point to it. I cannot tell you how many people wondered, Joey, why are you messing with this right. old weekend old system? Weekend after weekend after weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the things. But you know what? Because oh, I, know. I, I get the same thing. People on some of the different tension groups are like, oh, I want to do a kite swap. I'm like, no, you don't. Like, no. You, like, you have one. It's badass. I'm like, oh, it's badass, but you don't want to do it. <laughs> no, because you're still dealing with headaches on it. Because you're not going to spend the money that I spent to do it. You're not going to have the time that, to put in it. You're not going to have the, the knowledge and... Just, yeah. And not to mention the actual, because you had to you had to fab up a lot for that. You had to fab up for the E-Pass right. and even some different motor mounts for the motor, right? Nope, factory 4.6 motor mounts. Lucky son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, I have the, the E-Pass fabrication, uh, transmission cross member fabrication, gas pedal fabrication, and then the PCM delete where I made a bracket that bolts into the truck where the PCM would normally sit and I have all my wires passing through it. It's basically just a plate, but it uses the factory PCM grommet, and uh, my my bracket bolts into that same spot. Yeah, and even some of those things, I mean, even if you kept in the same generation, some were really bad. Because there was one guy on, I think it was, actually, he may have been on um, F-150 online. I can't remember his name, but he put a V-10 in one. Yeah, it's, uh, I shoot stuff. Yes. Yes. And I don't, I'm sure you remember that. He but actually... He, he, he just revived the thread too the other day about a uh, really three or four weeks ago yeah he was like he's like i hadn't it's a extended cab flare side and he's like i haven't done anything with it it's been sitting for a couple of years and he's like had a list of stuff he was gonna go back and get back on it but uh the last thing i remember is as far as when he got when he first got everything running on it he got because it was some ridiculous mess to get that thing because he had to sort of Frankenstein the both the, the, the V10 and the V8 right. harness right. just to get it to run right. but even then he didn't even get it perfect because the cruise control wouldn't work on it right. but then it, like he blew the engine on it yeah. or sucked up water or something uh, like yeah. that or, yeah which the V10s were they were reliable but they they still had issues with them sometimes but the biggest thing is I mean at that point I heard even says like was it worth it no yeah no yeah. I mean I, like, I, the, I'm I'm 500 and, or 600 hours in my truck in the last three years. Jesus Christ. Just an absurd number. And it's like, granted, not all that's coyote swap, some of it's other stuff, but still, people are like, yeah, I want to do this stuff. No, you don't. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. But just, no. Just enjoy mine from my YouTube. That's all you need to do. Just, yeah. No. I said the only one I use, really use mine for, the kind of most hilarious thing is like, what's the best video you ever had? When I told people, I was like, oh, you got a flashing death light and your truck won't start. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, so many things like it's probably just this relay. Oh hey, that worked. Oh hey, that worked. Yeah. I did a couple of other things like some of the stupid ways of saying, hey, let's make this stupid way of removing the headlight switch where you turn it on, pull it out, remove the clip, turn it upside down, stick it back in there, turn it there, and release the clip, and there you go. Only if you have a '97 to a 2000 switch, so it's two, a one and 03 are different. Because I actually wised up and made it smart, where you yeah, just stick a screwdriver. Just... <laughs> <laughs> because that's the way it should be. I actually got to get the light replaced in that yeah, thing. I was curious how the clearance was there. Yeah, it doesn't interfere with it. And I've got a frug ton of chains in there. But you, to... you had the actual light too? The light is in there, it's just blown out. Uh, have you seen the ones that have the the separate sliding out tray? I did, and I'd like to have that. I was like, well, it's not an official black one. And plus, I don't think I'm going to be able to fit that in there. Correct. Yeah, the cup holders are shallower, and it has the sec secondary slide out ashtray is what it is. Or AKA chain slot number two. <laughs> And there's so many people that don't have the cups either. Those those got thrown away by a lot of people because they're actual. This is the actual ashtray. Yeah. So you pop pop it out and then you go but, dump it out and put yeah. it back in. But so many people pulled them out to put drinks in them and threw them away. Yeah, kind of the sad thing is they are not very good cup holders. No, they're pretty terrible. <laughs> The only, the only nice thing about it is this one lines up with the AC vent so you can keep your beer cold. Pretty much. That is the <laughs> only reason to keep it. But these ones are so much better. Essentially, all you got to do is just go. Yeah, but pump out again, most people don't have these big big consoles. Yeah. Actually, kind of one of the interesting things I learned about this thing in general is the lighting for this switch is separate from all the lighting in, ever for anything else. Even if you have this backlit, mm -hmm. it's separate from that. Interesting. It runs in on, on its own circuit. So... When I first had to do it, first I, had, I took care of the backlighting, then I had to run everything on it. Um, but the, one of the biggest problems I had with running that system, finding four working sensors. Mm -hmm. 
they drop i actually had to use one from the following generation the 11th generation which they're slightly different and they're pinned out slightly so you have to like break a couple tabs but the fine ones on either on a on a first gen expedition right. for that work right i think i went through 10 sensors are, are they they're not color keyed right they're just black plastic yeah, as I said, all it is there, they plug into all of them, but they have like unique slotting in all of them. But it, it's not a painted piece, right? It's black plastic. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, they were slightly different. The Navigator's ones were slightly different where they had the color trim around it, but those were different sensors altogether. Gotcha. These ones you could use off the of Super Duty, the later F 150s. Right. But I said, if you do use one off like an 11th generation F 150, you'll have to do some plastic trim, yeah. uh, some trim cutting on right. it. But right. they were more reliable because, as I said, I pulled so many of those things and uh, when i finally pulled the ones off the, that 11th gen f-150 i said i i had pulled like not eight or nine previous sensors off <laughs> this correct generation i had three work right but the interesting thing is when they work you can you can actually put in reverse and you can hear them click on so, the sensor itself yes interesting. and that's how i was able to determine that was the problem <laughs> so yeah so, you could build your own standalone harness that you're able to because it, it's a single one-time click? It's like a tick, 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 okay. tick, 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 Gotcha. I didn't know it was like a one-time put in reverse and they go one click and that was it. But. No, but yeah, I so said if you were to put the, if you were to just turn the key on, put it in reverse, and go back then put your, you would hear it go tick, 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 So that was fun learning and all, all that stuff with it. And now I know as far as when they usually fail and it's just the same crap over and over again right. with it. But... Sweet. No, other than that, I said the only other things I've done to this thing um, were the wiper switch on it. Um, I did revert the cruise control switch back to normal on it because I don't, I, I never understood that the navigator clusters don't have a cruise light. They, they don't come with a cruise control light. I feel like I've heard that and it's probably used it. Yeah, I, I feel um, like I've seen that. Because somewhere. that was one of, that's when we I were, wonder if it's part of the, 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 clock part I don't think so because all they really had was just the clock on there now one thing would be cool to but have it could be the clock and then in that little black area next to it it could say cruise I thought that just had the hour I don't know yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm guessing I have no idea it but. could have been but no I, I found that the weirdest thing that's why I switched to the four wheel drive light on it right um funny thing is that actually the navigator cluster I took out of that thing I actually put in that 99 f-150 that we sold mm -hmm. and yes the mileage was all right yada 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 but no it's just swapping the PCB because the needles on that one stuck a bit but did that I've still got the low washer light and actually the interesting thing is the what it, now the, the low washer lamp oh okay yeah. yeah it actually starts turning on about half capacity okay so because I just bought because I bought this when I was starting to see it on and yeah. it went just about through half the gallon of it which a half gallon on it so did that um under the hood no, didn't really do much I still got the relay cover the the engine cover and all that yada yada but i actually like the little um fuse cover i've got that i got from um one of the guys on there where it tells you all the different fuses if you don't have your fuse box on you mm, okay but other than that um no i said it's unique i said it's, it's it's got its own unique things and people who know this truck know it's right. know it's me